All right, we're going to take about 15 minutes and go through the three kinds of heat transfer. Okay, then I'm going to refer to them as the three modes of heat transfer. All right, there are terms that you've heard in the past. Uh, we're just going to expand them a little further. Uh, we're not going to do any of the mathematics with them, uh, but you could. You could do calculations with them and actually find specific rates of heat transfer, specific amounts of heat transfer, and so on. But for right now, let's try and get a good grasp on what they actually are. All right, an important reminder, first off, is that heat always flows from areas of high temperature to low temperature. It's never the opposite direction, and it doesn't have any bearing on where there's more mass. It never goes from high mass to low mass. It always goes from high temperature to low temperature. All right, now the first mode is called conduction. Now, conduction is the heat transfer by means of a molecular agitation within a mere material without any motion of the material as a whole. Okay, now what does that really mean? If you were to look at uh, a, an aluminum pot on the stove, okay, when you heat up the pot, okay, the, mo the atoms inside that aluminum pot, the little aluminum atoms, start to vibrate more as they gain heat. They start to vibrate, but they stay in their overall location. Their average place is the same all the time. They just vibrate more, okay? And as they vibrate more, they start to affect the atoms directly near nearby and they start to vibrate more and then then the ones next to them start to vibrate more and the, that wave of heat that wave of energy passes throughout the entire pot okay that's how it works it, the aluminum atoms never really change overall position they just vibrate within their own location okay a uh, good way of me describing it to you is if you were in class you're confined to your chair but you had the ability to move around at your chair Okay, you're confined to a one location, but you still have some ability to move within that average location. Okay, now because of this reason, that's why it's more common to see heat conduction in solids uh, because of that organization and that average location that they must maintain. The reason why things are solids are because their atoms don't change their overall position. Okay, and because they don't change their overall position, they're very organized, and it's very easy it's to, five to pass energy um, throughout it. Okay, and the more dense it is, also the faster it occurs. I want you to think of it in a realistic terms. All right, so let's say you look at one of the windows at home. Okay, and it's a single pane window. There's no air in between. It's just one piece of glass that separates uh, the air inside your house to the air outside your house. Now. What's happening is there's a higher temperature inside and a lower temperature outside. So overall, the heat's going to pass to the outside. Uh, now, if you down, look down in the left-hand corner, you'll see that there's an up-close view of the glass, and each one of those gray circles represents a glass molecule. Okay, so what happens in the high temperature side, the, each, the glass molecules on the surface inside start to vibrate. Okay, and as they get more heat, they start to vibrate more. Okay, and what that does is it causes the molecule next to it to start to vibrate more. It passes its energy on to the next one, okay? And then that happens to the next one and the next one, okay? And until you get to the outside, so the energy has passed through the glass to the side of low temperature through agitation, okay? But if you notice, I didn't, sh I didn't draw the diagram showing the glass molecule all the way on the inside surface of the glass to physically move to the outside surface of the glass. It stayed in its, lo its location and just vibrated within that specific location more. So you overall have a transfer of heat from high to low, okay, without the physical relocation of the glass particles, or molecules, whatever you want to say. All right, so it's important that you understand that um, idea because that's what separates it from uh, the second mode, which is convection. All right, and each one of those black arrows just is represent the direction of vibration. Uh, now you've probably heard these two terms before. What's the difference between a conductor and an insulator? Okay, now conductors are uh, materials that pass heat easily. Okay, they transfer heat through them easily, um, and insulators are the opposite. They're the ones that have poor conduction. A poor conduction rate, right? So things like lead, aluminum, copper, gold, silver, um, things like that all are very good conductors. And if you notice, they all have something in common, okay? They all are metals. Metals are very organized in their structure. Uh, they have a very specific pattern. If you were able to look at the, the atomic, uh, the molecular structure of them up close or the atomic structure of them, excuse me, 
uh, they are actually very highly organized. So they're able to pass energy very well. Okay, think of it as like if I put everyone in the class in a, in a line and I ask you to pass a piece of paper down the line. Okay, if you stand in a straight line and are in a fixed location, it occurs very quickly. Okay, you're very organized. You're able to pass it very easily. Insulators usually aren't very organized. Okay, they have uh, they have a little bit of randomness to them. Okay, and it makes the the ability to pass heat through them very awkward. All right, like wood, for example, wood is not as organized as a piece of aluminum would be. So it's very hard for that energy to pass. Okay, that would be the same. Uh, in the same analogy, if I didn't have you in a straight organized line, but I had you scattered throughout the room to try and get the piece of paper passed across the room, it would be difficult, it would take longer, and it wouldn't be as efficient. Okay, same thing with rubber. Rubber is not uh, very organized. Cement definitely is not organized. And air and water actually are free moving, which makes it even more difficult to conduct heat. Okay, okay the key word is to conduct heat. Now, what affects the rate of conduction? Uh, the first thing is the material that heat is conducting through, as we mentioned in the last slide. Okay, if you have something that is made out of metal, uh, it more often than not is a better con better conductor than something that is uh, more of an organic substance like wood, or uh, plant material or rubber. Okay, so the first thing has to do with how organized and how dense is the material you're traveling through. Traveling through. The second one is the difference in temperature from the area of high to low. Okay, uh, if you if the temperature drops outside very quickly, all of a sudden the heat that you have on the inside of your window, inside your house, is going to pass faster through the window to the outside. Okay, the, the whole point is it's trying to balance. Nature always wants to balance. Okay, so if there's high temperature on one side and low temperature on another, it's going to try and even it out. And the bigger the difference, the quicker they want it wants to happen. All right. The third thing is the surface area of the object. Okay, now that should kind of make sense to you. If you have more windows in your house, you lose more heat. Okay, the more the windows are exposed to the cold air outside, the quicker it's going to occur. Okay, so having things like um, oh drapes uh, on your windows makes a big difference. Uh, double pane windows makes a big difference. Okay, um, things like that. Okay, if you had a room like Mr. Staub's room here at the academy has no outside window. So his room tends to stay very warm uh, because there's nowhere for it to pass. Okay, he only has that one window that looks down at the Knowledge Commons, but again, if you think about number two, the difference in temperature between the Knowledge Commons and Mr. Staub's room isn't very significant. So this, that transfer of heat is very slow um, and you don't see as much of a difference as opposed to uh, my room, which has all those large windows along one wall, uh, I tend to lose heat very quickly just because of the sheer amount of surface area that I have. And the last one is the distance between the areas of high temp to low temp. Okay, that's basically if we're just going to stay on the uh, the window example, it would be how thick the window is. Okay, thicker glass windows tend to lose heat slower just because of the sheer distance that the heat has to travel. Okay. Now the second mode is called convection. Now convection is a little different than conduction in the fact that the particles or molecules actually move. Okay, they do move uh, in location to and they carry the heat with them. Okay, so that typically happens in liquids and gases because of the mobility of the atoms and molecules in the liquids and gases. Okay, uh, wind is a really good example of a convection current. Okay, because it has to do with the air that's carrying the heat that physically change location. Okay, it's not only vibrating more, but the average location that it's in is is completely different. Okay, uh, it's traveling from an area of high temp and pressure to low temp and pressure. Okay, so the air would travel with it. Uh, same thing with uh, convection currents in the water. Okay, the Gulf Stream is a really good example of um, a convection current because it's physically the 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 ocean water is physically carrying the heat to a new location. Okay, from the tip of Florida all the way to the waters of northern Europe. Okay, uh, So let's expand on that just a little more. A really good example of that is ocean breezes. Okay, Now if you've ever noticed that being at the shore the direction of the breeze at daytime is different than at nighttime. Okay, on the, In the daytime the breeze uh, is directed in into the land and out to sea at night. 
Okay, now why is that? It has to do partially with the specific heat of water compared to the ground, okay? The specific heat of water is very high in comparison to the sand on the beach. Okay, now because that's true, the sand on the beach during the day heats up and also releases its heat quicker, warming the air above it. The warm air rises, leaving a void. Okay, the, the, water, the air above the water, because water does not lose its heat easily, it does not give it up, the water stays colder above the water, and it fills that void that the warm air rising above the shore uh, leaves. Okay, so you get a convection current that actually moves out to sea high in high altitudes and then into the, into the land uh, at low altitudes where you would be. Okay, and because of that same effect, the, diff, uh, the exact opposite occurs at night. Okay, the, there's no uh, heat left in the ground to warm the air. So actually, it's going to be colder air above the shore at night and warmer air above the, the water uh, during the night. So it actually reverses direction. Okay, And you can also see that the high to low change is actually high at high altitudes because of the warm air rises principle that you learn when you're in middle school. Okay, Now, what affects this convection rate? The first thing is the environment that he's convecting through, and that simply means the material. Okay, is it air? Is it water? Is it pure nitrogen? You know, what uh, what environment are you talking about? Because they each have a different um, um, structure, I guess you could say, uh, and how disorganized it is. Okay, the more disorganization, uh, the slower it occurs. Okay. Uh, the next one is the difference in temperature, just like during conduction. Okay, if you have a high, high temperature area and a low, low temperature area, the convection rate is going to occur very quickly. Okay, but if you have uh, a high temperature area that's not much different than a low temperature area, it's going to occur slower because it doesn't need to occur that fast. It doesn't have to, it's not eager to find a balance between uh, temperatures. And also the volume of the material that he's convecting through. Okay, if you're talking about a small region like, oh, if you're turning the air conditioning on in your bedroom at home, uh, the convection rate is going to happen a lot faster than if you were trying to air condition the Knowledge Commons. Okay, the NOCO is so large in its volume that it would actually take a lot longer to use the air conditioning, which is a type of convection current to uh, cool down the room. Right now, the third one is a little different. Now, thermal radiation really deals with electromagnetic waves. Okay, now that's something you've just learned about uh, in the last unit. And it's emitted by a heated surface in all directions and travels directly to its point of absorption at the speed of light. So, so one important thing to understand is the rate at which thermal radiation occurs is the speed of light. Okay, and it does not require a medium to travel through. Okay, you can have... Thermal radiation occur the same way underwater as in air, as in outer space, where there is isn't no medium. Okay, so that's an important thing to understand. So it has everything to do with the radiation that's given off. Now, radiation often has a negative connotation to it, uh, but it shouldn't. Okay, it's not always harmful to you. You are radiating heat all the time. Okay, unless you're in a room that's hotter than you are, you are radiate, radiating heat out, outward. Okay? So a real example of that, as you look at this, this is a thermal image of a home. Uh, the redder areas are the places of higher temperature and where there is more thermal radiation occurring. Okay, so if you notice, usually where the windows are, you can really see where the windows are in this house because they're green, yellow, and red mean that there is heat radiating uh, from them. Okay, so that's an important thing to understand. The redder it is, probably the the more heat that's radiating, so that's probably the first floor. You could probably tell that there are lights on downstairs or a fireplace in that in that vicinity of the house as opposed to upstairs, okay? So it goes through infrared, okay? It could be thermal radiation through visible light, um, things like that, all right? So it has everything to do with electromagnetic waves, uh, even your fireplace. Most of the heat that you get from your fireplace is not from the air that's heated up around the flames, but actually the thermal radiation and electromagnetic magnetic waves given off by the flames. Okay. Uh, so what affects the rate of radiation? It's just a few things. The first is the temperature of the body emitting the energy. Okay. 
the hotter the object that's emitting the radiation, the more energy, the quicker it's going to happen. Okay. Uh, now, something does not have to be glowing in order to be giving off thermal radiation. Okay. Infrared is a form of radiation that can change the temperature of something, but you can't see it with your eyes. Okay. Ultraviolet also can change the temperature of something, and you can't see it. Okay, so that's an important thing to keep in mind. Just because it's not giving off light doesn't mean it's not giving off energy. Okay, you aren't glowing, but you're giving off uh, electromagnetic radiation. And the hotter your object, the more it radiates. Okay, that should kind of make sense to you. Okay, if it starts off at a higher temperature, it's going to give off more than something at a colder temperature. Uh, when you do astrophysics or uh, you do some more in IV physics, possibly next year, you'll learn about black body radiation. Uh, and uh, how stars work in terms of this, you know, by based on what color uh, the star is, you can tell how hot it is. Okay, white stars tend to be very hot, red stars tend to be colder in comparison. Okay, now what you should get out of this is you should be able to know the difference between the three modes of heat transfer, and you should be able to apply them to specific examples that I give you. I should be able to give you an example and ask you which type of uh, Mode, mode of heat transfer you have. Okay, you should also be able to use that idea to uh, make more uh, make things like windows more efficient. Okay, if you understand the basic principles of it, you should be able to give somebody some suggestions on how you can make a, a room in your house more efficient based on those three. Okay.